Vista, California. Uh, today we're here in the Mira Mesa area of San Diego at the EVGO stations. These are brand new chargers. They should be capable of up to 350 kilowatts. I don't know if that's how high they go. It doesn't have any kind of labels on them, but we'll find out real soon. We have the new CCS adapter. So this is just for North America and South Korea. So it, it won't work in Europe. It's a different plug. And, uh, and again, these are only used in uh, North America and South Korea. And for a car, a Tesla car that is for North America, South Korea, and Japan. There won't be any CCS chargers in Japan, but they are in South Korea. So those are the only places on planet Earth that use that kind of a charger. And, uh, and this is the adapter. This came from South Korea, but I want to thank Tesla for making sure that we could get this. And uh, we're going to show you how to charge on this charger. All right. So first remove the plug. The top half looks like the J1772 plug that is called Type 1 in Europe and, uh, and J1772 in North America. Uh, it's from Japan, believe it or not. It was a Yazaki design. Uh, this is just going to be plugged in first. Make sure there's no debris in anything. It clicks together. It has to go together first before you plug it in the car. Then we're going to come over here to the car. Open the door. There's a number of ways to open the door on a Tesla. You can just push on it. Uh, by the way, the plug uh, will only work if your car has the proper hardware and software installed. We'll show you what that is, but generally speaking, it means the very newest cars, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, and newer that have the correct software. So just plug it in. And we're gonna run the card. A few moments later. So this was a successful test of the SAE CCS Combo 1 adapter for the North American market. Uh, the car charged uh, plenty fast, approximately 700 miles per hour uh, added at the charge rate of around 180 plus uh, kilowatts. Um, and that's just simply the kilowatts multiplied by four for the metric system, just multiply by six and you'll get how many miles or kilometers per hour. Um, there's three ways in North America to now fast charge a modern day Tesla. So I'm just gonna restrict this to model year 2020 and newer for now until we can be assured that older cars can be modified with the proper communication equipment and that um, you know, they have the proper software on the car in order to use the adapter. So this 2020 model year, uh, Model Y, was able to do it. So that's a roughly two-year-old car. It had the correct software and uh, it worked on the first try and worked quite well. So again, there's three ways to use a fast charger in North America for a Tesla, again, a later model Tesla. Uh, the original way, of course, is with a supercharger. Tesla started rolling those out in 2012. In the late uh, latter half of 2012, uh, those originally charged at 90 kilowatts, then they went to 120 kilowatts, then 150, and now 250. So not all of them are 250. Actually, some are out in the field that only have 72. But, um, but by and large, you can find the faster chargers for supercharger. And those don't require a fob or an app or anything. You literally just plug the car in. So that's the most fluent way 
to charge your car. But let's say you're traveling and for whatever reason, the supercharger is blocked. Uh, there's too many cars. It's, you know, in California, at least you can get, uh, you know, busy periods where it's just difficult to get in. Um, or, you know, there's a detour and you can't get to the charger or it's just convenient. You're there and there's a, a public charger. Uh, so you'd want to have your adapter uh, in your car. Uh, there's two separate adapters for two alternate DC fast charging methods. Uh, one is called Chatamo. This has been around since roughly 2015. I don't recall exactly which year it came out, but I believe about 2015. Uh, that is um, a worldwide standard, so you can use the Chatamo adapter anywhere in the world. Chatamo right now, the last time I checked, there's 50,000 charge stations uh, around the world on, I think, five or even six continents, but five for sure. I think almost 100 countries. Uh, it's still growing in Europe, even though people will tell you that, you know, it's dead. It's far from dead. Uh, and, and there's well over a million cars that can use the Chatamo now. The limitation with a Tesla car is that Chatamo is restricted by the adapter, the physical adapter that Tesla produces, to 50 kilowatts. So uh, 50 kilowatts times, you know, maybe four miles per kilowatt hour would be a maximum of about 200 miles per hour added. Uh, your supercharger at 250 kilowatts can add about 1,000 miles per hour. And the adapter that we're talking about today, the SAE CCS Combo 1, yes, it's a mouthful, that plug is only used in, in uh, just a few places on planet Earth. So please don't let anyone tell you that that's some universal, the whole world is adopting it. It's quite the opposite. It's only used in North America and it's used in South Korea. That's it. Uh, there is a, another one that's called CCS, but the plug is, is quite a bit different. And no, they don't interchange. Uh, and that one is used primarily in Europe and some other places like Australia and I think New Zealand and whatever. Uh, interestingly, uh, Australia started with the Combo 1 and then converted to Combo 2. So, so that's kind of interesting. But uh, anyway, so this, this Combo 1 or CCS Combo 1 or SAE CCS Combo 1 adapter for North America and for South Korea uh, is, again, if the car has the proper equipment on board, that means the communication uh, protocols on the car and has the right software to, to run it then uh, the car can charge up to about 700 miles per hour. So that's pretty good. Uh, so let's talk about these advertised numbers. So when I'm talking about kilowatts, so the charger is delivering power in kilowatts. Kilowatts is simply just voltage times amperage. So amperage is a really important part of the equation. The voltage you can't do much about. Most of the Tesla cars are between 350 volt maximum and 450 volt. So right around 400 is the middle uh, of where most Tesla cars, uh, the battery voltage is. And, and again, you have no control over it. But what you do have control over is selecting a fast charger that has the most amount of amps. So where would you find that information? Uh, it would be on the data tag and hopefully we'll, we'll bring up a, a, a picture of the data tag of the charger that we used. And you can see that unit is capable of 500 amps. So it's real simple to figure out the, the theoretical maximum if you have a 400 volt battery car and the, and the charger can put out 500 amps, you multiply the two and you get 20,000. So 500 times 400, 400 is 20,000 and you take off the three zeros because that's the K part, the kilo, and you get 20, uh, excuse me, 200 kilowatts. Um, the, um, the, the charger that can provide that 200 kilowatts might be labeled as a 350 kilowatt charger. So the fastest Tesla supercharger is labeled as 250 kilowatts, yet it can add 1,000 miles per hour. And it can do that at about 700 amps. So it's a very seriously fast charger, but it's it operates at exactly 250. That is the advertised speed. And that's exactly what it'll do under ideal conditions. Generally between 10 and 30% of your battery state of charge. Uh, for a larger battery car like the Model S, um, you know, with a 100 kilowatt hour battery, it might be slightly more, maybe 10% to 40%. But generally speaking, at the low lower half of the batteries where the battery will always charge the fastest. 
Um, but when you go to a, a public charger that's called 350 kilowatts, well, how fast is that really? Is it faster? And the answer is no, because it's entirely dependent on how many amps. Unfortunately, some of the 350 kilowatt chargers only have 350 amps. And they, they come up with this equation for 350 kilowatts because they literally multiply it by 1,000 volts. Well, unfortunately, um, none of the cars that I'm aware of, exactly zero, go to 1,000 volts. So right from the very beginning, it's a little bit of a, a misnomer. Um, but a Porsche car with a, a battery that's rated for 800 volts uh, can only charge at about 280 kilowatts. So even it that was designed for that standard and the 350 kilowatt advertised speed um, can only charge at about 280. A Tesla car like a Model 3, Model S and the like can charge at 250 kilowatts today. And this is, uh, you know, the middle of 2022. Uh, I suspect in a relatively short amount of time, Tesla cars will be charging faster and the, and possibly the Cybertruck will charge faster because it's going to have a pretty big battery. The semi-truck will probably charge at, I'm going to guess, one megawatt maybe, uh, which is 1,000 kilowatts. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're going to keep, we're going to continue to grow uh, in this EV market with better performance and, and faster uh, stuff. So so again, the, the limitations on the three methods to fast charge your car, uh, supercharger requires no adapter, it charges the fastest, even though it's only labeled as 250 kilowatts. Secondly, the, uh, the SAE CCS Combo 1 will charge at, as we saw here, about 180, 185, 188, somewhere around there, uh, which was 500 amps and at the battery voltage. And that's how much the car actually got. And that's the most you could expect with 500 amps. It won't be more. Uh, some of the ones you're going to find that are limited to 350 amps, it's going to be significantly less. Uh, 350 amps, um, you know, off the top of my head, 350 times four, maybe you get 120 kilowatts or maybe, you know, 140. Some number in that area is what I would expect. And um, and then the Chatamo adapter, which has been on the market for some time, uh, you're, again, you're limited to just 50 kilowatts, so it's 125 amps, and that's about 200 miles per hour. So anyway, I hope that all helps. Uh, we're going to have, uh, as we have always had, the Chatamo adapter here at QC Charge. Um, we will uh, begin to market the, uh, the CCS uh, adapter for North America. Again, it'll just be restricted to cars that uh, can physically use it. That'll be like the uh, 2020 and newer cars should should work. I expect Tesla will have some kind of a retrofit of a of a charge port that will have the correct communication uh, protocol with it, and then update the software. And maybe older cars can use it too. But no matter what, I mean, if you buy one, be sure and test it right away and make sure it does in fact work. Don't throw it in the back of your car and say, hey, on a rainy day, maybe it'll work, and uh, and find out it doesn't. So. Um, anyway, I'm Tony Williams for QC Charge, and thanks for watching.